Okay, in this video I'm going to be going over the X-Aircraft X650 Pro frame kit. Um, now this is a new kit from X-Aircraft. I purchased it from CNC Helicopter for $300. And this is the frame only kit. So it essentially comes with everything that you see on this table here. Um, it, it uses the pretty standard um, plastic composite landing skids. Uh, it comes with a canopy for the center of the frame, and this is actually quite rigid. I thought this would be some sort of thin vacuum formed plastic, but uh, it, it seems to be quite strong. The thickness of the outer walls is almost one and a half millimeters, and it gets much thicker towards the inside, I would guess closer to two millimeters. And each of these tabs here is almost two millimeters as well. Now, the central frame uses these two plates. Each of these plates is one and a half millimeter carbon fiber. Um, the actual dimensions of the plates are about 150 millimeters square. It's actually um, 154 by 138. And this plate here is 138 by 144. Now it includes um, some accessories, just stickers, uh, yellow decals that you can wrap around the arms for uh, orientation. Uh, it does include a manual, and this is my third X aircraft frame, and I don't believe the first two included in a manual, so that's kind of nice to see. It does go through pretty much all the details, how to assemble it, um, wiring the motors, flight controller. This is for the Super X flight controller, which is the new flight controller from X aircraft. But for my build, I'll be using the DJI NASA with GPS. Um, now, it comes with two of the Velcro battery straps, um, a few zip ties. All of the hardware packages are labeled with the size of the bolts. And as with the other X aircraft frames I've purchased, it comes with a bag of extra parts. It comes with about one of each of the parts there. Um, the motor mounts are a new design. I believe the previous X650 frame used plastic motor mounts. These are, looks like CNC milled aluminum. Um, they're pretty solid. It has a heat sink on the top so you can mount your ESCs underneath. And the bolt pattern is 19 by 25, it looks like. Yeah, 19 by 25. Um, so these motor mounts here should work with most motors. Um, most motors will have 19 millimeter hole spacing, but 25 millimeters will only work with uh, some of the larger motors. So if you are using a motor that has 16 by 19 millimeter hole spacing, you'll only be able to bolt in uh, to those two holes there. I'll be using the T motors with this. These are the 780 kV motors, um, and I have 11 uh, inch RC timer carbon props. The hole spacing on these is uh, 25 by 19. Um, so those mount right at the bottom there. Now, the thickness of the motor mounts, I believe it's about 2 millimeters, but it has a lip on the edge here. The lip is 4 millimeters, and it looks like the inside here is probably about 2.5, maybe 3 millimeters. Um, they're quite hefty, but, but they're not too heavy. Um, not too bad at all. So, nice thing about this frame is it is a folding frame. Um, all of the arms snap into these pieces here, and you can fold it up for transportation. Um, you can also route the wires through these arms. Um, the arms themselves are carbon fiber, and these metal reinforced pieces actually insert inside of the arms, and that's what you would bolt through to from motor mounts. So. I think that's just about covers the uh, overview of the frame. Um, the 
the loading pipes for the landing gear, which are these here. Uh, these are, let's see, 10 millimeters, and the thickness of the carbon fiber is a half millimeter. And these load pipes go inside of these uh, rubber rings here and that helps to isolate the vibrations on the frame and those loading pipes are suspended from the central frame plates. So I'm going to go ahead and start assembling this and I'll, when it's all complete, do an overview of the completed frame. Alright, here's the completed frame. Uh, right now it's folded out got the battery tray on the bottom here with an XT60 plug. I also included an auxiliary power plug and this will be for the brushless gimbal which I have coming in about a week. Uh, the NASA battery elimination circuit with the USB port is mounted right on the bottom so that the LED is visible. And then I have my 400 milliwatt video transmitter mounted right along the side with the antenna facing downwards. And so here we got the T motors, the 780 kV T motors with the 11 by 5 RC timer carbon props. Uh, these props are it's $15 for a pair, so not a bad price at all. Um, they're very well balanced. I, I actually have not balanced these. Um, they seem to be pretty well balanced as is, and I brought it out for a test flight with the GoPro hard mounted to the front here and there's very little jello if, if any in the video so probably the best video I've ever had with a hard mounted GoPro um, and I think the fact that it's a nice solid carbon frame combined with these motors and props really does help because I have used an X-Aircraft frame before with the same kind of uh, vibration dampers but I still had some jello in the video so this really really works well um, You'll see here that the speed controllers are mounted right underneath the arms. Uh, there's slots for zip ties so that you could tie them right around. And then of course the heat sink is right on the top here. So you can have good heat dissipation on the speed controllers. When I routed the power distribution, I pulled through enough wires that there was enough you know, slack to solder it to the uh, speed controllers here. These are the Hobby King 20 amp speed controllers and they're flashed with Simon K firmware. Um, I have the every other motor reverse wired instead of using the reverse firmware that way they're all running the same firmware. Um, one thing to note uh, I'd say the most difficult part is just trying to solder these connections here. It really depends on how much slack you have on the wiring. If, if you don't have enough it's going to be quite difficult to get in here and solder these power connections but it's still doable and you need to make sure you have a soldering iron with a high enough wattage to be able to melt these connections otherwise it's quite easy to uh, break off the soldering pads or simply not be able to remove the wires um, I removed the original signal cables and replaced them with some extensions I made to be able to reach the flight controller uh, that's another thing that you have to be careful with because the signal wire here, it's under the zip tie so it's a bit difficult to see but right above the signal wire there's a resistor and that resistor on one of the five speed controllers I had uh, simply came right off it barely even had to apply any heat and it just popped right off so um, if you do decide to replace the signal cables be very careful make sure that you don't short the connections and make sure that you apply very little heat to these connections when soldering them because you don't want to lose any of the uh, components on the circuit board so that's pretty much all for the wiring. Here I've got the uh, the video transmitter. You can see that mounted a little bit better. The nice thing is that the uh, heat sink on the reverse side of this video transmitter is 25 millimeters wide, which is just about the thickness between the two carbon plates. So it, it pretty much just slides right in there. And then I secured it with two of the zip ties, and it fits right under the lip of the uh, the outside shell here without bowing out. So it's a really good fit. Um, and I think this having the signal or having the antenna mounted upside down here would probably make for a better radiation pattern on something such as this when you're flying in the air. Um, I'll go ahead and remove the canopy here. It's pretty easy to remove. In order to fold up the arms you do have to remove the canopy. There's 
different sets of uh, tabs here for when it's folded. Inside, I've mounted the NASA antenna, the GPS antenna, just to the top instead of using the mast, and it works just fine. Um, I have absolutely no problems with uh, signal interference on the, the canopy, so this way it stays nice and protected. Uh, one thing I did be sure to do was I located this as far away from any of the high current wires and the video transmitter. Uh, the antenna and video transmitter hang on this side from the bottom, and the GPS antenna is on the opposite side on the top. Um, I also have all of the connections for the power distribution, which are probably difficult to see, but they're wired on this side here, uh, closer to the video transmitter and further away from the GPS antenna. Uh, the NASA has to be, you have to remove the top plate to mount it, even though it looks like it would fit between this slot here, it does not, but there's plenty of room to mount it once you have it on the inside. Um, I'm using the FR Sky D8RXP receiver. The nice thing about this receiver is it has telemetry, RSSI, uh, PPM. It has a bunch of features on it that are nice for the receiver, and it's also an FR Sky receiver, so you get range out of it. Even though I'm not using this with um, any sort of telemetry sensors, it does have the capability of sending back RSSI. So if you put it in telemetry mode, um, the radio transmitter will start beeping if the signal drops out, or if you're getting towards the edge of... Uh, of your signal's boundaries, so that's a you know it's a nice feature to know when your radio signal's getting low. And uh, of course, it has uh, two diversity antennas, which at the moment I just have wired going down the sides. So um, I've got in the front here uh, my HD Hero 3 Black. Uh, this mount is a 3D printed mount. It's a very simple hard mount. It uh, latches on to this side here and then pops in over here so you simply pop in this side and then fold it down. The GoPro has to be out of the uh, the strap in order for it to completely be removed. Um, that's why I won't demonstrate it right now but um, once you clip it on if you want you can add some vibration uh, damping foam. This is uh, some foam from Hobby King. It's, it's a very light foam almost like a memory foam and I just have that mounted right above the GoPro and a velcro strap that goes around through the slot and right around the GoPro. It is mounted upside down uh, but the reason for that being um, you still have access to the ports on this side and the lens is perfectly centered between the load pipes. So it's, it's kinda nice for FPV. I mean it's not made for AP because of course it is just a solid mount. Um, this is a temporary solution um, and good for FPV flying until I get my um, my gimbal in and that should hopefully be a next week. Um, these these hard mounts I'm, I'm probably going to end up selling them on my website so there'll be links in the description and you'll be able to purchase those if you want. It should be pretty cheap. Um, I'm using a live video out cable from ReadyMade RC and then that goes right back to the video transmitter. Uh, video transmitter is rigged right into the power distribution as is the auxiliary JST plug on the bottom and I'm powering it with some 3300 milliamp hour 3 cell batteries. Uh, these are nanotechs and it's the 35 to 70 C discharge, which I've found to be the best discharge rating for a multicopter. Um, if you use the 2550 C batteries, I find that it, it takes a while to bleed off the last few volts on the battery. And um, you'll notice that the flight performance is worse during the last few minutes. Um, as the battery drains. As you increase the C rating, the voltage output, you'll, you'll have a much more uh, straight curve in the center, so it'll be able to hold a nominal voltage under a load for a much longer time. But if you get too high of a discharge rating, which I have tried the, uh, I believe they're 45 to 90 C batteries, you got to be really careful with those because it flies very well throughout the entire flight, but the moment your battery buzzer goes off or the battery seems to get low, you have only a matter of seconds to land before the battery drops below 3 volts per cell. So ideally I would recommend using 35 to 70 C batteries. They've worked pretty well for me. Um, and these nanotech batteries have, uh, have always worked quite well for me. It's the only LiPo that I buy anymore. Um, I'll go ahead and fold this up real quick so you can see what it looks like folded up. So each of the arms simply fold in just like this. 
they snap into place. You'll see here that there's um, a little groove just pinches onto the load booms there. And um, it, it kind of makes it a little bit more portable. It's still a pretty large platform regardless of whether it's folded or not. But it is nice to have um, the ability to fold it up. And then, of course, the canopy just attaches right back onto there. Snaps right on. Um, and as I said in before, this is a, it's a very tough canopy, very thick. I'd expect it to be some cheap, almost vacuum-formed plastic, but it's injection molded. It's about one to two millimeters thick throughout the, uh, the canopy, and then it has this ridge here to keep it nice and stiff. Um, other than that, uh, any other problems I ran into um, or things that I noticed? Uh, as I said, I mounted the GPS antenna inside because it is rather difficult to find a mounting spot on the outside with a mast. But I do like how it turned out this way because it keeps everything concealed and uh, you know it's, it's a clean look. Um, one thing about the assembly, uh, as you'll see here, there's a bolt that passes through the arms and comes through the bottom. There's no nut, it simply threads into the motor mount. And then on the inside there's a composite mount similar to this but not aluminum. And it, it has a bolt that passes through as well. Uh, but one thing to be careful of is it's probably a good idea to ream out the pre-drilled holes on the carbon fiber so that they're a little bit wider. Um, otherwise what happens is you pass the bolt through, comes through the other side, but it's very difficult to tell when you catch the thread on the bolt because it's quite tight. Um, so if you ream it out, you should be able to reverse thread it until you feel it grab and then you can thread it in the correct way and that way you don't cross thread the screws uh, or the bolts rather because it would be quite easy to cross thread the bolts on the inside. These were not as bad. These pretty much went right through, um, no problem. And uh, I think that's it as far as the assembly is concerned. Everything was pretty straightforward. Just uh, those bolts and mounting the ESCs and soldering the connections were probably the trickiest parts. Um, overall, it's a, it's a great frame. I really do like it. Um, probably, I've, this is, I think, build number 17, and it's by far one of my favorite frames. It does have similar attributes to the X4 and the hexacopter that I built that were also X aircraft frames, those being the landing gear, uh, loading pipes, stuff like that, which are pretty convenient for mounting gimbals and batteries too. But my previous frames, I'll use composite arms, and I wanted to go with something a bit more rigid, test it out, see if I could get a uh, better video on my GoPro. And already, it's a significant difference. Um, as I said, this is just a hard mount. No gimbal, no vibration isolation except for the stock dampers here. And uh, it performs quite well. So I'll probably upload some sample videos from this later. Um, and I will also be posting a video later which will be an overview of my new FPV setup. And this here uses the Hobby King diversity monitor. So I've got a helical and a omnidirectional uh, cloverleaf antenna. So I'll be doing a review of how this works and uh, just a, a breakdown of how I have it assembled, what kind of mount I used, and so on.